back in 2016, Nvidia's GTX 1080 was a graphics card I so desperately wanted. However, seven years down the line, I finally have it in my hands. Before I start off this video, I want to know, in your opinion, what do you think is the best graphics card generation? Personally, I think it's Pascal, as they're seven years old now, and they're still crushing it in games today. Nvidia's GTX 1080 launched in the spring of 2016 with a launch price of $599 US. This MSI model is a bit more of a desirable card, and it probably did cost a bit more at the time as well, but with this you get slightly better gaming experience, not only in terms of gaming performance, but it also handles the heat a lot better with lower temperatures and lower noise levels too. The GTX 1080 was a massive upgrade over its Maxwell predecessor, the GTX 980. It features 8GB of GDDR5X compared to the regular 4GB of GDDR5 found on the GTX 980. It's also had quite a massive CUDA core bump as well to 2560 CUDA cores, which I know may seem insignificant by today's standards as the RTX 4090 has roughly about 7 times the amount of this. But do remember this is 2016, so this was 7 years ago, 2560 CUDA cores back then was a lot until the GTX 1080 Ti come along so yeah but that's another story. This is the MSI Gaming X version of the card and it features their twin throws of cooler which is as red as the cover art for Red Dead Redemption 2 which looks great in my opinion. I think this is MSI's best cooler design but the only problem with it is if you're not going for a red build the graphics card would look so out of place in your PC so this is probably why they went with the more gunmetal finish after this card. But this graphics card features a boost clock of 1822MHz, but I think boost cards and graphics cards are just a marketing scheme at this point as GPU boost usually pushes it beyond these NOA so when I was benchmarking this graphics card it usually stuck around 1922MHz which is an extra 100MHz over the boost clock so yeah don't look too much into boost clocks when you're buying a graphics card especially with nvidia ones and the caller did a really great job of keeping temps in check when they hovered around the low 60s and i could barely hear the thing on my open air test bench so msi did a really good job with this caller i've tested the 1080 at both 1080p and 1440p as i think these are the best resolutions for this card and judging by the results you're about to see it can certainly run both of these resolutions just fine all testing today is done on my testing system which has a Ryzen 5 5600G, 16GB of 3600MHz CL17 DDR4 memory running in dual channel, a 1TB Sabrent Rocket NVMe Gen 3 SSD and an Asus Strix B550-F Gaming. Getting into the benchmarks now and starting off with Unigen Superposition and in the 4K optimised benchmark which I like to use on much powerful GPUs it got 6,986 on average. And I've also tested at 1080p medium too, which I like to test on some older graphics cards. But with more powerful graphics cards, I do become pretty CPU bound with it. But the GTX 1080 got 15,882 here. First game up is, I believe, is the newest in the benchmarking roster today, and that is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Here I set it to the balance preset as I believe the need for a high frame rate exceeds the need for graphical fidelity, especially in a fast paced title like Call of Duty. I did set it to the high textures however, just to make the game look a lot less muddy and 8GB of frame buffer is plenty at both 1440p and 1080p. Speaking of 1080p, the GTX 1080 got 105 FPS on average with 64 FPS for that 1% low figure. So if you're willing to drop it to the basic preset and keep them high textures, you'll be getting around 130 odd FPS I'd like to say at least, so I'd recommend doing that in this game. Switching up to 1440p now and it got 76 FPS on average with 43 for the 1% low. Here again, this is more than playable performance, so if you've got a 1440p 60Hz monitor, play out these settings and you'll be fine. But if you've got a 1440p 144Hz monitor, again set it down to the basic, keep the textures on high, the game will still look pretty decent I guess, and you'll be getting a lot more frame rate as well, so this is what I recommend. F122 is up next and here I set it to the high preset which I think looks relatively okay, there's nothing to write home about, it's not 
exactly a graphical masterpiece, but you don't need it to be as it is a racing game and you need as much performance as you can get. Trust me, I know I play this game quite a lot. I think F122 is slightly harder to run than F1 2021, thinking about it, but at 1080p, the GTX 1080 got 141 FPS on average with 85 FPS for the 1% low. Keep to these settings, the game looks fine and performs fine. Maybe if you've got a 240Hz panel, drop this down to maybe medium or low, keep them textures on high again, and you'll be getting a lot more frames. At 1440p, it got 103 FPS on average with 69 FPS for the 1% low, nice. Here again, decent performance, maybe drop it down to the medium, you might be getting slightly better frames there, and the game will look worse, but you'll perform a lot better. Over the past few months, Fortnite is that one game I do like to test a lot as it's quite popular now thanks to its no build game mode. Here I set it to the high preset with DirectX 11 as I think that's the best API for this card. I would recommend going with a low preset here if you're more into a competitive experience. However, at 1080p it got 134 FPS on average with 80 FPS for the 1% low. Fortnite usually does stutter quite a bit but I did start benchmarking when the caching was done. There were a few hitches, but by playing quite a lot, this will iron them out as it builds up the shader cache. At 1440p, the GTX 1080 got 88 FPS on average, with a 1% low of 55. There was a bit of stutter here. I don't think this has got anything to do with the resolution change. It's probably, yet again, just shader caching, so I wouldn't look too far into this, because at the end of the day, it is Fortnite, and Fortnite does like to stutter a lot, so yeah. Here performance is not too bad at all. GTA 5 is up next and it's an old but gold game believe me. It's still pretty popular thanks to 5M servers so that's why I still like to test GTA 5 here on the channel. And here I set it to the very high preset with 2 times MSAA. And at 1080p the GTX 1080 got 121 FPS on average with 89 FPS for the 1% low. Performance here is nice and smooth. If you're playing on GTA Online, do expect a lower frame rate. Switching it up to 1440p, however, and this got 92 FPS on average with 67 FPS for the 1% low. Whether you're playing at 1080p or 1440p here, you're still gonna be having a great time because I think it looks perfectly fine. It looks great on the very high settings. And even at 1440p, you're getting that extra clarity as well, and it's a lot sharper than 1080p. Rainbow Six Siege is somewhat popular I guess, but it's that one esports game which is very easy to benchmark and it's very representative of what an easy, lightweight esports game is. Here I set it to the high preset and at 1080p, the GTX 1080 got 283 FPS on average with 185 FPS for the 1% low. Great performance here, you'll be having a great time even if you've got a 240Hz. Even a 360Hz panel, you'd be having a great time here. Switching it up to 1440p, it got 218fps on average, with 163fps for that 1% low. Yet again, even if you've got a 240Hz 1440p panel, Rainbow Six Siege with the GTX 1080 will run perfectly fine. Moving to a game which is a lot harder to run than these two, and that is Forza Horizon 5. It tends to scale well on newer hardware, but then again, the GTX 1080 is not exactly new, is it? But this isn't a problem because at 1080p, it got 95 FPS on average with 77 FPS for that 1% low. On the high settings, I think this is a decent figure to get as the game looks pretty good on the high preset and 95 FPS is certainly a good performance figure. Moving that up to 1440p, now it got 79 FPS on average with 66 for the 1% low. I'd recommend leaving at the high settings here as 79 FPS on average is a great performance figure. It's relatively smooth if you've got a 144Hz panel. If you enable G-Sync or FreeSync, the game should feel smooth enough as it's more of an arcade game and 60 FPS in this game would be perfectly fine, so yeah. Assassin's Creed Valhalla is more of an AMD title, even with the newer gens of graphics cards, AMD does tend to perform pretty well in this game. Nvidia still performs well however, because on the high preset at 1080p, the GTX 1080 got 73 FPS on average, with 47 for the 1% low. For 1440p, we drop below 60 FPS here with 54 FPS on average, but I don't think this is nothing to sweat at because you could watch a optimization benchmark, keep the textures on high 
and you'll be getting a great game experience here on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, so I wouldn't worry too much about this. Cyberpunk is that one game that always surprises me in benchmarks for either reason, and today I don't think the 1080 performed particularly great in this, because Cyberpunk always does bring all the hardware configs to their knees. And it seems to not like Pascal too much as well for some reason, I don't know why. So here I set it to the medium preset with high textures and at 1080p got 59 FPS on average with 43 FPS for the 1% low. There was quite a lot of micro stutter I'd like to say with this game, it didn't feel the smoothest it could, so this probably contributed towards that poor 1% low performance. At 1440p though, it got a lot worse with 39 FPS on average and 31 FPS for the 1% low, so performance here wasn't great. I'd recommend enabling FSR 2.1 and putting that on quality or even balance to get a bit more of the frames back. You will lose a bit of clarity, but it depends what you want. Is the frame rate or the quality more important to you? Last game of today, it feels like I've been talking forever on this, is Horizon Zero Dawn. And here I set it to favourite quality, which is essentially high, so yeah, the game looks pretty good on this preset, I'm not going to lie. And the performance was really good too, with 93 FPS on average, and 64 FPS for the 1% low, so... At 1080p you could even get away with ultra I reckon. At 1440p we stayed above 60fps with 64fps on average and 54fps for that 1% low. So even at 1440p the favour quality preset is perfect for this graphics card. I'd recommend keeping it at these settings. So yeah, Horizon Zero Dawn performs pretty well on a wide variety of hardware from whenever I've tested it. Whether you're running an eSports title or a really hard to run AAA game, the GTX 1080 should still be a great option for you. Don't forget that these things can go for around 140 on the used market. You do take some inherent risk with buying used, but from my experience, every time I've bought a used graphics card, I've had no troubles. Maybe I've had to change the thermal paste, but yeah. Buying used, as I've always said on this channel, is a great option. Even in games like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is notoriously pretty hard to run, especially on Nvidia GPUs, it ran just fine. The only thing I can think of where the GTX 1080 was having a bit of a stumble was Cyberpunk, but this is Cyberpunk, it doesn't run well on Pascal cards for whatever reason, I even had issues on my GTX 1080 Ti back in the day, so yeah. The GTX 1080 Ti is a graphics card I want to benchmark soon, so let me know if you want to see that benchmarked here on the channel. Performance at 1440p was pleasantly surprising too, with most games running extremely well. Even games like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 were running just fine at 1440p, with no issues, no stutter, or anything like that. So yeah, the GTX 1080 can easily run games at 1440p if you manage your expectations accordingly. So as long as you don't care about ray tracing or any of them DLSS features as you can use AMD's FSR, I think a GTX card is still a very viable option here in 2023. And if you want a 144Hz 1440p experience in esports titles like CSGO and Rainbow Six Siege, or even Fortnite for that matter, the 1080 as well should be able to push them frames just fine with no issues attached. So can I recommend a GTX 1080 in 2023? And the answer to that is a definite yes. It runs so well and it smashed all of my expectations. And for £140, I think you'll get an incredible value for a GPU of this calibre. I am putting this into a budget gaming rig which I'll be uploading in the coming week. So make sure you stay subscribed for that because I think that'll be a pretty good video. And I think this PC is going to pack some incredible value. So yeah, make sure you stay subscribed for that. So with all that being said, I'm going to leave the video here. If you like it, like it, stay subscribed for more content and I'll catch you in the next one.